The government and the population of New Zealand need to decide whether they want cheap fish and chips from the west coast of the North Island or Maui's Dolphin, because you can't have both. We cannot say in any way, shape or form that New Zealand is 100% pure anymore. New Zealand has the fourth largest economic zone globally. So that's the zone of water that we're in control of around our land. But only 0.4%, so less than 1% is protected. How can we expect these species to thrive when the rest of that ocean is unprotected? Seabed mining, overfishing, pollution, climate change, like all these threats are just exacerbated. We need to look at what we're doing to the ecosystem, the, where they're living, their habitat. We are fundamentally transforming it and making it unlivable for them. So for example, we have 63 Maui dolphins left on the planet and they only reside on the North Island on our west coast. If you, if you combine all the, all the survey numbers, there, there are around about 15,000 hectares in Maui's. The Maui subspecies is a bit sad really. The future of Maui's dolphins rests on about 15 females and that's a real concern. There might have been some here as well, but definitely there are some in the general direction of the terms. I know. We started doing research with Hector's dolphins in 1984 and then quite soon in the first year, just after a few months already, we started noticing that, hmm, what's with all these dead dolphins? We started finding dead dolphins on beaches and talking to fishermen and hearing from many of them, oh yes, I catch a dozen or so of these each year or I catch 20 or so each year. And so in Steve's interviews, he found one guy caught, what was it, 44 in one summer uh, around Banks Peninsula here. People often ask me, what's so important about these dolphins? Really, does it really matter to my day-to-day -day life? But actually, yes, it does, because they are the canary in the coal mine. Because they are an apex predator, if they go down, the entire system, ecosystem underneath them collapses as well. Niwa estimated um, that between 2000 and 2006, there are around 110 to 150 dying each year in fishing nets. Um, so there's been several times that better protection has been put in place, uh, including the last of those changes was late last year, it was October 2020. We have seen an improvement in the survival rates here, which is, which is you know, a big achievement. But we're hoping to see, uh, to see quite a bit more um, control of fishing activities so that this population has a chance to, to recover, to fully rebuild to what it was before. I think that if any species would go extinct on, you know, my watch, our watch, um, during the course of my lifetime, you know, that causes all of us consternation. You know, there's a lot of time and energy that goes into looking at the a wide plethora of options, policy options, regulatory tools that we have before us currently uh, to ensure the protection of our Maui dolphins. Just recently I commissioned some more work on that. What else can we do? I haven't received any advice that there's a simple fix. If it was simple, it already would have been done. So reversing the decline on anything in the biodiversity space is, is so hard. If we really want to reverse the decline of anything, we need to stop commercialising nature. If I talk about the commercialisation of nature, then fishing is a big, you know, has a, a big impact uh, on our seas. So we have to, again, be up for some pretty brave conversations about what we're prepared to do. So am I prepared to change my diet? Am I prepared to change what I buy, where I live and what I drive? to protect and restore or you know am I not up for that conversation yet because I'm just enjoying my best life um, and it's really hard to have that conversation in a society where in my view you have such extremes in, in the socioeconomic communities. There are minority communities, there are communities that are low socioeconomic that are just starting to get out of impo uh, impoverishment um, and they have a right to enjoy some of those luxuries that other segments of the community have had for generations. Um, so to tell them not to have that car 
um, and to tell them not to eat that food because it's bad for the environment seems really unfair right now uh, when that's probably the first generation that's had those luxuries. Unfortunately, it coincides at the same time that we're experiencing such great environmental loss. I'm a half glass full kind of gal and I think that when we have done our job and socialised just how critical our biodiversity loss is both in the ocean and on land, I'm confident that we will get the social licence we need to be able to take some, some measures that really require uh, significant lifestyle changes. Are we at that point yet? Probably not, be frank. There's a lot of work to do, I think, in terms of getting people to really understand the nature of the crisis. New Zealand sea lions used to be right around the, both islands of New Zealand. It's thought that they were extirpated at some stage, um, so wiped out off the mainland. The New Zealand sea lion population has um, been in decline, uh, probably from around about 1998. Um, and there's around about, I think it's 12,000 um, mature individuals in the population. We know that sea lions have been caught in the commercial fisheries around the Auckland Islands. And the government wasn't particularly happy with that conclusion. And they came up with this idea of sea lion exclusion devices, and they're called sleds. And there's a hole in the net above, which it'll then swim out and go on to survive. So they don't get trapped in the net and drowned. And so back in 2012, they basically concluded that the fishing industry was now no longer a cause of um, sea lion deaths. And the problem is they've never done the experiments that are required. And there's really good um, evidence to suggest that sleds might not be working as well as we think they are. The reports I've read to date have shown that they've done a relatively good job. Not perfect, of course not perfect, but a pretty good job. Whether there are other regulatory tools we could look to, uh, amending, adapting, reforming, it's always on the table. So is it off the table? No. Is it a priority right now? Probably not either. Not within this term anyway. We need to absolutely ensure that all of our fisheries are sustainable. The way that they operate, the way that they extract, doesn't harm the environment and the ecosystem. And globally, all scientists are saying we need to put 30% of our oceans aside to allow nature to thrive again. We need to establish the Kermadec Rangitahua Sanctuary. If we do that, which is one of the most pristine ocean areas in the world, if we do that, we are actually putting 15% of our oceans under protection, which is absolutely a first step to helping our oceans recover again. The Kumadik still isn't off the table. You know, we look to those types of areas to do, so that we, we know that uh, when we hang up our cap, that we've done everything in our power whilst we could to uh, put the protections in place to ensure the survival of our marine environment. We're losing species at an unprecedented rate worldwide and, and our impacts on this environment are, are, are completely unsustainable. And, and the, the two biggest existential crises that, that humans face are uh, climate change and the biodiversity crisis. And you might think, well, why would biodiversity uh, really affect us? Well, you know, you can, think of, you can think of the environment like a wall and every species that's lost, you're effectively taking a brick out of that wall. And eventually the wall will fall down. I don't think it's too, too late to save Maui's, but to achieve that, we're gonna to have to make some substantial changes. And the government and the population of New Zealand need to decide whether they want cheap fish and chips from the west coast of the, of the North Island or Maui's dolphin, because you can't have both. We live our lives kind of insulated from nature, but we remain part of it. And when that system becomes weaker, as we are making it, that has implications for us.